This lesson will demonstrate how to use linear systems to solve some problems. And in the first example on this page, uh, Mark has a total of 95 different golf balls in his golf bag. And the, the only kinds that he has are either, either Pinnacle or Nike. Now twice, we're told that twice the number of Pinnacle minus the number of Nike balls is one. And of course he has a total of 95. So we're asked to find how many of each Mark has. So just like in previous examples, the first thing you should do is identify your variables and then decide what you're going to use to represent each one. And I'm going to use P here to represent the number of pinnacle balls and N to represent the number of Nike balls. Now the very first sentence tells us that Mark has a total of 95 altogether. So the number of pinnacle balls plus the number of Nike balls should add to 95. The second sentence says twice the number of pinnacle, so that would be 2p, minus the number of Nike balls, so minus the number of Nike balls, is equal to 1. So there's our two equations from the first two sentences, and we can use one of the methods of solving system equations to find p and n. And either method here is probably equally as uh, convenient to use. Uh, I could use elimination actually very quickly here. I could just add them because the n's are opposites and eliminate the n very quickly and solve for p. I am going to use substitution, but for no particular reason. I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to solve this uh, equation for n. So n equals 2p minus 1. Now I'm rearranging. I'm really rearranging like this. I'm thinking of solving for n like this. If I bring the n over here on the right side, we'll have a positive n there. And then if I bring the 1 over here, its sign will be negative. So I would have n equals on the right uh, 2p minus 1. So that's how I solve for n, n equals 2p minus 1. Now, so I'm using substitution. So I'm going to substitute what n equals in place of n in the first equation. So I'm going to rewrite this first equation, p, there's that p. Now in place of n, I put the 2p minus 1. So there's the 2p minus 1 equals the 95. And so I'll start collecting like terms, p and 2p add to 3p. And rearranging, if I add 1 to both sides, 95 plus that 1 is 96. And if I divide both sides by 3, I'll find what p is. The number of pinnacle balls should be 32. 96 divided by 3 is 32. Now we need to find the number of Nike balls. So I'm going to use this equation, solve for n. And I'm going to replace the 32 in place of p. So 2 times 32 is 64, minus 1 would be 63. So the number of Nike balls should be 63. Now to check in the two equations that p is 32 and n is 63. So the first equation says p plus n should equal 95 and 32 plus 63 does equal 95. The second equation says twice the number of pinnacle balls, which is 2 times 32 in this case, that's 64, minus the number of Nike balls, which is 63, 64 minus 63 does equal 1. So it does check in both equations. So as a concluding statement, I would write something like this. There are 32 pinnacle and 63 Nike golf balls. That's how many Mark has. Turning over to the second page. Uh, and this, is, this would probably be called a rate problem. Um, Sarah travels 40 kilometers up a river in her motorboat in four hours. But of course, uh, it, she would go uh, make a quicker trip coming downstream because she's now going with the current and it takes her two hours to return the same distance downstream. So we're asked to determine the current and the boat speeds. The, the current is how fast the uh, river is going and the boat speed would represent the speed of the boat in still water. So again, uh, decide what your variables are. The variables here are the, uh, the speed of current of the river and the boat speed. So I'm going to let C represent the uh, speed of the current and B to represent the, the boat speed in still water. Now, the upriver speed, if you're going up the river, you're going against the current. So 
if B and C represent the boat and current speed, the speed she'd actually be going up the river relative to the riverbank would be her boat speed minus the speed of the current. When she's going downstream, she's going with the current, so her speed going down the stream would be the boat speed plus the current because the current's enabling her to go faster than the boat would in still water. Now, remember that the distance you travel is equal to your speed or velocity multiplied by the time. So d equals st. Distance is speed times time. And we use that to get two equations with these two different speeds. So the first sentence says Sarah travels 40 kilometers in four hours. So the distance is 40 kilometers and her time is four hours and the speed going upriver is b minus c. Now if we take that equation and divide both sides by 4 to make the equation simpler. Then when we divide the 4 out on this side, there's just left with b minus c. And then 40 divided by 4 is 10. So the equation simplifies to b minus c equals 10. The second part of this sentence says uh, uh, returning downstream it only takes her 2 hours. So again, the distance is still 40 kilometers. But the time is now 2 hours. And her downriver speed, again, was b plus c. So dividing both sides by 2, we get b plus c equals 20 because 40 divided by 2 is 20. And so here's our simplified system of equations. And it'd be easy to solve this by using substitution or elimination. Uh, I'm going to use elimination. And because the c's are opposites, I'm going to add, and I'll eliminate the C's that way. I could very easily subtract and eliminate the B's. It would not matter. So B and B add to 2B, and 10 and 20 add to 30. Dividing both sides by 2, we get B equals 15. So the boat speed should be 15 kilometers per hour. Now I need to find the, the current speed of the river. And using the second equation here, um, the boat speed is 15. Now we're going to find the current equals 20. So uh, C would have to be 5 kilometers per hour. Now checking, and you should always check in your original equations, not these simplified versions, because if you made an error from here to here, but did everything else correct, the check in this then would work, but it wouldn't be the correct solution. So back to the original equations. The uh, right side of this is B minus C times 4. So we're putting 15 in place of b and 5 in place of c. So 15 minus 5 times 4, that's 10. And 10 times 4 is, of course, 40, which we want the left side to be 40, actually, in both cases. The second equation is b plus c times 2. So 15 plus 5, that's 20, times the 2 is, again, 40. So it checks in both equations. So again, a concluding statement. The current flows at 5 kilometers per hour, and the boat speed in still water would be 15 kilometers per hour. And flip